What's up everyone? In the last video, we configured um, VXLAN eVPN and we deployed two uh, VXLAN uh, domains or two bridge domains. Uh, one was 12310 associated with VLAN 10 and the other one was 12320 associated with VLAN 20. Now, these two domains, they don't talk directly, they don't communicate. And what we're going to do is to allow the communication between these two different domains. And we're going to use asymmetric routing. What it means is that at each VTAP, we'll have to configure the same VXLAN ID and the VLAN uh, associated with that uh, VXLAN ID or VNID. From the packet perspective, if we look at it from R6 trying to reach R7, uh, we're going to define LEAF1 as the default gateway sitting right now on the network 192.168n so that when the, the packet reaches LEAF1, uh, LEAF1 will then uh, bridge the traffic across uh, LEAF2 towards R7. And the reply packet is going to be, uh, we will follow the same path. Uh, so it's going to be bridged from R7 to LEAF1 and delivered to R6. But we're going to see this in practice. So I have deployed already the same scenario, uh, like where we stopped in the last one. So right now R6 uh, should be able to talk with R8 and it can and R7 should be able to reach uh, R9 so that's 29 so leaf 3 should be ready it's ready okay so that's working and if right now 6 tries to reach 27 uh, we can see that uh, let me see should see a broadcast here uh, let's see if i can get that i believe that's leaf one capture let's see sourcing from should see a broadcast here if we can send another packet be able to capture um broadcast packet from r6 oh no it's not so first what we have to do is to uh configure the gateways so right now uh they don't have a gateway thing so it's going to be 10 11 and on r7 is going to be 192.168.20.12 and we have to enable um, the interface on leafs so bring leaf1 and I have to enable the feature interface VLAN well now okay and going to add VLAN 10, 10, 11, 24, no shot. And I should be able to reach 10, 6. And I can. I'm going to do the same thing for leaf 2. So let's enable feature interface VLAN 20 interface and interface vlan 20 yeah that's 192168 20 12 24 no shot and should be able to reach 192168 20 um 7 and again okay that's awesome okay so as both leaves they must have the same configuration for layer 2 uh we're going to copy uh, uh vlan and evpn configuration 
I bet. So run. And going to be VLAN and EVPN. So we have to copy these which port? No, only here. That's going to be VLAN twenty and uh EVPN configuration. Uh and NV okay and that should be and we're going to copy these uh, to router of uh, to leaf one we need to copy and paste okay so let's see if we did configure the VLAN into this let's just confirm that the VPN configuration is in place no it's not so let's paste again so sometimes but this has to be 20 actually okay so let's confirm NVE so VTAP configuration is in place and confirm EVPN so 1, 2, 3, 10 and 20 okay so now we're going to add leaf 1 to this segment 192, 168, 20, 11 and we're going to enable the interface and uh, we're going to add leaf 2 to network um 1 to 3 10 or vxlan 10 and vxlan 20 as well so right now it should be only on vlan 20 so we're going to do the same for vlan 10 going to be 12 24 no shot So right now, uh, should be able to reach 10.8. Okay. And leaf one should be able to reach uh, 27. Okay. So if we try to ping 27 now from R6, that should work. And it does. And we can see here so we received a reply so first uh the arp broadcast this was sent from uh, zero four i believe this is um leaf two and b04 504 yes that's leaf two uh, Performing an ARP request B from 10.6 and we got the reply from R6 saying it's MAC address and this allowed the communication between 10.6 uh, and 10.7. So as we can see this configuration is quite simple uh, but it brings some challenges uh, because it means that if we want the, allow com the communication between uh, this host with R9, so it means that we'll have to configure uh, the same uh, parameters for VXLAN and VLAN on Leaf 3. And if we have these on a large uh, environment, uh, we'll, we would have to configure on all VTAPs and that can be an exhausting process. One thing that I noticed is that R6 is able to reach R7 but it's having a different behavior when it tries to reach R9 and if we try to ping R9 right now so I actually we have to configure the gateway first so R9 should be able to reach um, 
leaf 12, leaf 2. Okay, so we're going to set leaf 2 as the default gateway as well. Okay. So let's try to reach R6. And it doesn't work. Now that's curious. Um, I've been labbing these uh, for a while and I can't tell if it's a bug or something that I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, but it's, it's interesting to see that R9 can't reach N6, but it can reach uh, 27. And let me bring 10, 8. I'm going to set the same default gateway. It's going to be 10, uh, in this case, can be 10, 11. And so if we try to reach uh, 27, it works, but it tries to reach 29, it doesn't work. And another thing that I noticed is that from the leaves, um, from leaf 2, is able to reach 10, 11, uh, 20, 11. And when it tries to reach train, uh, leaf 3, it doesn't work. So it looks like it's something related to layer 2. Um, if I can show the capture here. Let's see. see. Yeah, we can see that uh, Leaf 2 is performing ARP to know the MAC address of Leaf 3. But it doesn't make sense because uh, they are in the same layer 2 domain, right? Uh, and this is something interesting. Um, just to watch out for this. Probably something related to this, or it's a bug. Or something I uh, haven't figured out yet but you have something to watch out for so anyway on the next video we will going to see how to perform uh, symmetric routing and I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you on the next one